So I want to go straight to the introduction, and I want to underline why we are we have done this type of uh, uh, ex mm, work. This uh, ex want to publish this experience. Uh, we know that uh, target uh, second ultrasound propose uh, uh, in literature to increase the specificity of MR, but uh, uh, we know that it is possible to uh, uh, find a correlation with the MR imaging only in 75% uh, of cases, and this is a recent publication uh, by Speak. From a theoretical point of view. Uh, a large number of additional lesions could be shown by MR imaging, and uh, in the same publication that I uh, mentioned, uh, more or less 42% of additional lesions can be found. So this, there are two possible explanations for these uh, uh, numbers of lesions that we can see during the first look of uh, imaging. Of course, one of is an objective one, probably related to the force that we use, the, the energy that we use uh, to study the, the breast, like uh, uh, some lesion can be seen in ultrasound and some others uh, with mammography. And of course, sometimes uh, there is no uh, an overlapping uh, between these two techniques. And uh, uh, surely a subjective or human-related reason. So we can understand exactly where the lesion is uh, shifting from the supine position of the uh, or prone position of the MR imaging to the supine position of the ultrasound. So aim of the study is to present our results of six years assessment of secular ultrasound with the volume navigation of additional of all additional lesion detected in MR imaging to analyze the clinical value using pathology as reference and to assess the need of MR guided biopsy that is the the other uh, solution to biopsy uh, a lesion that can be seen only in, in MAR. So, the study population. We started in 2009 and finished the, the collection in 2015, uh, looking for uh, 1,881 uh, uh, MR examination in 1,437 patients. We had the um, approval by the um, committee and, and the patient form and consent. And all MR examination were performed in the second week of the menstrual cycle in case of premenopausal women. And of course, uh, all the examination in prone position were done in the, at the state of the art. Before the examination, all patients uh, underwent to clinical examination, mammography, and ultrasound. So we have done the first step in all patients. And the inclusion criteria was the detection of additional lesion at the MR imaging, not detecting at conventional imaging, and uh, a lesion that could be classified in the BARATS 3, 4, or 5 by consensus of two radiologists. So, in case of a correlation directly uh, of the second look, of course, uh, we perform an, at once the biopsy in uh, ultrasound-guided biopsy in the old patient in which we have a, a sure correlation, a sharp correlation. Then, uh, in case of concordance, of course, we have done the biopsy and left the um, marker inside the uh, bed of the biopsy to have a, a reference in for the future follow-up. In case of no correlation with the US, uh, in this subject, we um, mm, decided to candidate this patient uh, in two ar different arms. In case of uh, uh, hypertrophy of the breast, evaluated with two anthropomorphic uh, measurements, we 
uh, decided to candidate patient to second glutathione with VNAB or uh, to MR guided biopsy. Of course, these uh, two measurements uh, take in account the whole breast uh, uh, volume because we can we can consider only the bra measurement because you know uh, some types uh, of people use to um, um, uh, to have larger in a small bra or to have a uh, uh, small breast in large bra so the the measurement of the of the bra is not uh, connected to our purpose so in case of second look ultrasound with volume navigation, is the first case in which we don't have uh, breast hypertrophy, we have to prepare the patient for the examination. And first of all, we have to put uh, three pairs of markers, one of the skin and one upon the skin in, um, in to see uh, um, during the MR examination this marker on the corresponding uh, uh, signature of the uh, on the on the skin marker. Whole subject were in a supine position, and uh, a position in the MR room has uh, uh, the um, position as well as the position to US examination. We put the marker uh, subjectively in at uh, nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, and three o'clock, only to have uh, of the of the um, uh, affected breast of the additional lesion, of course. And the, the capsules uh, were fixed uh, with a, a, a single coated surgical tape, uh, as described in literature. This is an example in which we draw with the surgical pen. Uh, the marker on the skin and the corresponding capsules of vitamin E on the on the surface fixed with a, um, a plastic uh, coated. This is a, a, a larger breast than the previous, as you know, directly in the bed of the uh, um, before the MAR uh, execution, and you can see here the. Uh, one type of error that we can avoid, so th something that can be uh, a sort of distance between the skin and the marker. Of course, uh, uh, at the MR imaging, uh, what we see is the capsule of vitamin E thanks to the technique. So we can't see the skin marker, of course. But it's important that the, the pills is on the, the, the surface of the skin. No. Uh, um, distortion should be caused by the pressure of the coil, as I will show you. And then, if the uh, pill is on the, the skin, there is a good correlation between the two examination during the second look. Of course, uh, now we have to uh, talk about the MAR protocol because uh, since now we heard that it is impossible to do an MR imaging in supi position. All the standards is in prone position, all the vendors uh, do uh, coils for prone position. So, uh, of course, it's impossible to do an MR in supine position, but we apply a protocol and we, without any breath hold, because the examination takes 10 minutes, uh, we acquired the T1-weighted uh, uh, T1 fat saturation 3D protocol. We use two MR scanner, 1.5 Tesla, and we use uh, uh, very high quality uh, sequences, uh, high resolution sequence, in which we had uh, uh, one millimeter um, voxel in dimension, so a very uh, tiny um, acquisition and very tiny uh, voxel. And of course, as you can see here, uh, uh, with a scan time of more or less two minutes, we have done one pre-contract um, phase and four post-contract uh, post phases, as well as the dynamic study of the of the prone position uh, examination. And uh, of course, as I told you before, we have done in all subjects uh, uh, um, of the um, premenopausal 
uh, subjects, we, we, we do the examination in the second week of the menstrual cycle. And in the other, the remaining person, uh, at maximum se seven days after the first examination. So nothing could be happened between uh, the two examinations to confounding effect uh, for the lesion that we see in the first examination. And then we perform an MR imaging in supine position with the body coil, as I show you now. This is the machine, the preparation table. Then you saw, uh, you can see here the preparation of the patient. Uh, now the patient is in supine position, and we use the mattress between the, the coil and the surface of the of the cest of the of the women, because we don't know, we don't want that the coil fixes to the body could uh, uh, could make a distortion of the of the breast during the examination. In fact, you can see that one strap is uh, uh, a belt is, is uh, uh, fixed, and the other one is open. So, is the, the the patient is free to breathe to to do some uh, a normal movement of the breathing uh, without uh, apply any distortion of the breast. Of course, this is the. Uh, finishing preparation of the person, the examination is done, and uh, we pull out uh, the pills on the surface and cover the surface of the skin with a, a, a tape, and uh, to avoid that the signature, that the seam uh, the, of the surgical pen is uh, uh, dilated by the disinfectation of the of the skin. This is the first publication in which we explain in uh, 2009 the uh, first results of our paper, our work uh, with the Giorgio Rizzato, and uh, uh, trying to understand if uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, road uh, could be applied uh, uh, during the time. This is the second uh, paper in which we have uh, uh, recruited uh, volunteers volunteer to understand uh, uh, how much is the uh, systematic error between uh, the position of the, uh, the discrepancy between uh, the US examination and the MAR examination. And then I want you uh, to show the um, steps to the co-registration. Now we select the volume. Uh, uh, in a USB or in a, a disk. We um, uh, upload the, the disk uh, on, the, on the machine, and then we can uh, do the uh, registration coupling the three pairs of uh, uh, markers, the three markers on the skin of the patient and the other three markers uh, on the uh, MR imaging thanks to the vitamin E on image. And then we can use the machine uh, uh, like uh, a road map uh, with a different magnification or with the same magnification we can use uh, the technique like a fusion imaging. After the co-registration, in case of uh, uh, suspect, uh, confirmation of the suspect uh, during uh, the examination, we have done the biopsy, and even in this case, left the uh, tissue marker to be sure for the fo future follow-up. Now, you can see here the sensor positioned on the probe of the US, the transmitter, and the uh, disk, the location for the disk. This is the uh, where uh, the transmission is placed uh, to do the examination, the disk, and uh, the probe with the sensors. This is the same patient. You can see here the patient is not uh, has uh, not a, uh, uh, an A cup. Uh, you can see he is is a, is a, a, I think a, a B or a D cup. So the volume is more or less. Uh, uh, 400 cc for, for each breast, 
and you can see here the preparation for the examination. You have to select the volume, upload the volume to the machine, and then to uh, connect and co-register the position of the pills with the position of the markers on the skin. Of course, you you have to scroll the image, uh, MR imaging that you have uploaded on the, uh, your machine. And then you have to fix the point by point. This is the, an old uh, method. Now we have uh, a new one that we have uh, uh, available in uh, University of Siena that, uh, do, uh, um, that cut these passages uh, very quickly because you have directly on the skin of the patient uh, um, a marker that is uh, automatically recognized uh, on the on the machine. So we, these passages are uh, cut by the new technology with uh, uh, a, a spare in time in uh, five minutes. So you can acquire everything in less than five minutes. And then you can see here the old technique, of course. So the coupling of the markers, only to to know that uh, to fix two different volume, you had you need at, la at least uh, three points. So it's very easy to acquire. It's very easy to uh, perform the examination. And at the end uh, of the uh, co-registration, of course, as you can see here, the correlation between the nipple area and the image. But I show you some images. Uh, of course, here is in the uh, the um, internal mammary artery that you can see here in the US image and in the, in the uh, MR image. And you can see here the, the green box represent the area of the scan and the yellow box represent the uh, a possibility to show the Doppler of the vascularization, of course. Here is another image in which uh, you can see uh, the nipple area and the correlation between the right nipple area in the two technique. And I want to show you now the best of uh, correlation between the image and the anatomy. You can see uh, the ligament of Cooper here. And there are very, uh, uh, a very good correlation between the anatomy of the breast and the, um, uh, of the glands in internal of the breast and the uh, correspective uh, image on the mark. So, in case of no, uh, uh, in case of hypertrophy of the breast, of course, we have to shift directly to MR uh, guided biopsy. And of course, as the literature suggests, you have to uh, do a repeat MR that we have avoided, and you have you have to use uh, uh, some particular material like a, a, a vacuum assisted biopsy. You have to do 24. Uh, biopsy of the of the lesion uh, with the ten gauche uh, needle. So, uh, for this type of technique, we refer to the Evan Corbuner publication uh, just to see at the state of the art. We left the tissue market even in this case for the future follow-up, and we use a statistical analysis to uh, study our results square, ANOVA test, and so on. An alpha test of 5% resulted in a statistical significant result, of course. So, in the period of the study, six years, more or less, uh, 51 patients interrupted the examination. That is a, a, a very small number if you think of how many patients interrupt the examination. So, it is. A, I, I think that is a good results in, to do with examination in spine position. And uh, of course, we prospectively evaluated 1,930 uh, examination. And uh, more than 74% uh, uh, resulted with no additional lesion. So it's not a big problem, but uh, in the, uh, the remaining uh, uh, 25%, we have at least one additional lesion. So, uh, looking for the 
uh, distribution of the population, of course, uh, you have to think about the prevalence of the disease. Because if you uh, candidate uh, um, a high-risk patient, if you do candidate, if you candidate uh, uh, preoperative examination, of course, this ratio will increase because uh, the prevalence of the disease will increase. And of course, in this 25%, uh, uh, we discover 722 additional lesions. That, of course, uh, could change the surgical approach of this examination. And the prevalence of the disease in this case uh, is 37%. And I want to show you with a graph uh, all the study, because as uh, it's not so easy to understand the, the workflow of the, of the study. So we have the old patient, 50, 51 of the patient left the study, and then we have uh, uh, a large majority of the patient that don't have any additional lesion. 31, uh, in, in uh, 381 person, we have a bar of six with no additional lesion, but in the large majority, we have no lesion or benign lesion. But in 25%, as I told you, we find out uh, 722 lesions. And I want to show you the uh, indication of, and you can see here, the 28% was for follow-up, and 27% uh, uh, in the third level examination for MR, and only uh, 22 percent of uh, um, preoperative. So I think that this can be uh, uh, homogeneous and represent uh, all the work that we do routinely in our uh, practice, uh, because the, uh, not all the patients are concentrated in preoperative or high risk patient. So can this number can be the number of everyday practice? We have done. We have found out uh, 549 lesion at uh, reveal by second look ultrasound, simply second look. And so they were biopsied, and 65% were benign, and 34% was malignant. And of course, we have to understand that uh, something was wrong during the, the first look, of course, because as I told you before, uh, the examination, uh, every uh, subject were un underwent to conventional imaging, mammography, ultrasound, clinic as examination. So th something could be uh, related to the fact that you know that in some place you can find a lesion. So with the standard machine, you can understand that you are facing with a new lesion probably related to that correlation to the, uh, the impossibility of the technique to show you uh, with this type, that type of energy deletion. So you need the contrast, probably. 173 were occult, totally occult to US. So uh, 151 underwent to second ultrasound with VINAV, and 22 with a guided biopsy. So, uh, no vanishing lesion. This is another topic of the literature because sometimes you can read that uh, each lesion that you can see at prone MR image could be a vanishing lesion in a certain percentage. But of course, if you do the examination in the second week of the menstrual cycle, it's very rare to have a um, an evanishing lesion, because evanishing lesion represent the a, a, a true false positive uh, that is uh, depending by the um, stimulation of the estrogen in the breast. So, in uh, 151 additional lesion, we have done the MR guided biopsy. And the pathology revealed 44% uh, of benign and 55% uh, of malignant lesion. And uh, in the MI-guided biopsy, the 
uh, uh, the remaining patient, of course, the, in which uh, we have uh, an hypertrophy of the breast, we have uh, a very small amount of malignant lesion, 2%, 9% to lesion. So this is the uh, workflow in case of uh, no correlation with UAS. We have um, uh, um, additional lesion biopsy with US, uh, additional lesion biopsy with uh, volume navigation, and additional lesion for MR guided biopsies. These are the row number of uh, each type of uh, biopsy performed. And uh, in the publication, we were obliged by the reviser to, to reviewer, uh, by the reviewer to, to put how many B3 were in the population. So this is a, a, a table, uh, declare exactly the number, the amount of B3 at the classification. And of course, a B3 in a, in a group of uh, preoperative or uh, high risk patient is not the same B3 of the general population. So I think that uh, this can be useful, but uh, uh, we have some concern about uh, the, this type of number, but only to understand how many, uh, how many B3 were um, distributed in the, our population. And of course, you can see that the large majority of B3 were mass lesion in the group of US. And now to uh, uh, go deeper for uh, uh, benign lesion, this is the table of the results of benign lesion. You can see the distribution of, of the dimension and uh, the uh, characteristic uh, uh, of the in the, in the three groups. The B1, band one is the US, band two is the uh, volume navigation technique biopsy, and band three, the examination of the MR guided biopsy. And of course, this is the uh, results of a malignant lesion distributed for technique, of course. And you can see here, uh, the distribution, the dimension of the lesion in these three groups. And of course, we, we, we can think in some paper you can read in the literature that larger is the uh, lesion, more easy is uh, to be found in the US or, and you can see here, for instance, an uh, invasive duplex carcinoma or 41 uh, centimeter, totally blind to the first look. So I think that we can, uh, we can um, spare NMR imaging more to find this type of uh, disease. So the statistical analysis at the end of the study showed that uh, uh, there, is a, uh, there are a significant higher number of mast lesion in the group of uh, uh, second ultrasound biopsy. It means that, uh, that it's for us it's much more easy to see a mass lesion during second look at US. But uh, uh, in the same group, we can see statistically higher significant benign lesion. So it means that, yes, we can say that the marine imaging have a lot of false positive, but as well as uh, 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 US examination. Because uh, in this type of com uh, comparison, we have a lot of uh, benign lesion undergoing to uh, biopsy in, uh, in the US group. No significant difference were found in the lesion dimension. There is no, uh, uh, nothing in comparison between the, two, the three techniques. We, we have to cancel the, the thought that uh, larger is the lesion, better can be seen in the US. It's a, it's a characteristic of the lesion and a characteristic of the source of energy that you use to see the lesion. 
and uh, no significant difference were found comparison between these, th uh, these three groups. So not uh, something related to the dimension of the lesion. So the follow-up was very interesting, very long and very interesting because three lesion biopsy at US uh, demonstrate a discrepancy between uh, what the radiology thought on the uh, on the classification of the lesion and what was the results of the pathology. And uh, three benign lesion, uh, two uh, fibro adenoma and one sclerosis adenosis. So in these cases, the biopsy was repeated uh, using volume navigation. Confirmed the benign lesion. In one lesion biopsy at volume navigation, was re-biopsied uh, because the discrepancy, and it was an uh, intramammary lymph node uh, of six millimeter. I will show you the, the case after. And after two years of follow-up, none of the benign lesion, additional lesion, referred to volume navigation or a margated biopsy, revealed a malignancy. This is a good result because uh, we left uh, uh, the marker only be to be sure during the follow-up that the benign benignancy was truly a benign lesion because uh, after this uh, uh, very complicated work uh, left uh, some cancer behind is a very uh, important, uh, uh, unlucky uh, situation. In three cases of benign lesion of uh, a US guided uh, biopsy uh, that was referred as benign, in three cases we had a, a carcinoma. Um, one in, in situ that was uh, uh, previously diagnosed as a typical ductal hyperplasia that we know that sometimes uh, pathologists can mix this type of pathology with no risk for the patient, of course, because we don't have uh, invasion, we don't have metastasis. And uh, one uh, invas invasive, invasive lobular carcinoma that was uh, fibrocystic changes, and one a uh, mixed cancer of DCIS and uh, invasive ductal carcinoma that previously considered, was considered as sclerosing adenosis. And I will show you again this case. So the first case that, that I want to show you is this uh, double case because we have done. Uh, uh, even double evaluation on the breast, on the right breast, uh, on the upper part of the screen, and the uh, left breast on the just uh, in, uh, down. And you can see here by the static image, you can see so many uh, suspicious lesion. You can see here uh, a rounded. Uh, uh, mm, uh, margin of the lesion, uh, some uh, hypoechoic uh, uh, cone, and you can see here a very lobulated uh, rounded lesion, so nothing to. But if you look at uh, the MR imaging here, there is something that could be associated to an introductal component here and uh, some speculation. But I want to show you deeper. Here is the movie in which you can see here the invasive ductal carcinoma with the large introductor component that is superior to four centimeter. So if you think about that this person could be related to the surgical room to do a, sem a simple quadrantectomy, you can expect to have a margin affected by the disease, of course. And on the opposite chi uh, uh, side, you can see here the intramammary lymph node of the lower external uh, breast, of the left breast. And of course, we have done the biopsy, a simple lymph node, nothing else. This is another case in which uh, we search for a, uh, um, a lymph nodes of the internal mammary chain. And you can see here the, the area of the scanning, uh, the blood flow, and the position of the 
lymph node affected and the internal mammary chain. Of course, with this technique, you can use even the elastosonography. So you can fix the play, you can fix the lesion, put the marker on the lesion, and then you can perform the uh, um, elastosonography to have the results of this second look to be sure that uh, this uh, is a benign lesion. Of course, for the purpose of our study, we have performed uh, uh, the biopsy to have uh, approved pathology uh, lesion. But of course, you can see here that uh, the lesion is uh, totally soft, so it was not a suspicious lesion. This is another case in which we have a, a clearly visible lesion on the US, but of course, again, we can expect to have uh, the distribution of the lesion more than four centimeter on the Invis totally invisible on the US image because uh, the intraducal component is totally hyperechoic, that we are not trained to do uh, a cancer hyperechoic. We usually see the lesion in a hypoechoic view. So, and this is another case that was mismatched by pathology in which we have here a lesion of 24, uh, 24 millimeter, and you can see here nothing. And this patient has uh, as well the breast prosthesis, so you can, have, you can do the biopsy without any uh, uh, fear to, to do a, 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 um, a lesion of the prosthesis. So, uh, you have to think about uh, that you, when you put an, a needle inside, you, you have to be sure to, to, to have the right position of the lesion and the right position of the, in, in very safe mode. This is uh, another image published. So you can see here a very clear pathologic enhancement of the U of MR imaging. You can see here the peel of the, of the breast. And you can see here how different is the echogenicity of the, of the lesion. Of course, it's something wrong, but the shape and the significance of the lesion is totally different. And, and again, here, you can do the uh, strain uh, evaluation and of course you can do the biopsy you can see here the needle inside the breast uh, to do the collection of the pathology for the pathology in conclusion an objective second look in us can be effectively be obtained with the mr co-registration mri co-registration using volume navigation this could be a reliable technique in view of the technology improvement yielding a high image quality of the breast MRI, even in supine position. With, it is possible to have a good examination in supine position. And uh, what about the cost benefit of US with volume navigation compared to the MR guided biopsy? Mainly are due to the a time saving in the MAR room, but uh, even for the material that you are not obliged to, to use. MAR compatible materials are much more expensive than uh, the US material. And you are not obliged to do a vacuum assisted. You can do a simple true cut uh, biopsy. And very easy, very fast in comparison to MR guided biopsy. And the application of technique, uh, this technique make uh, it possible to detect a large number of additional lesions that are occult to US uh, second look and to biopsy a significant number of malignant lesions safely and respectively to the distance of the skin and lesion position. In fact, you can do the biopsy or MR guided biopsy near the thorax, near the uh, cest wall, or near the skin. So is the only uh, system that you to reach the, the additional lesion. 
I want to acknowledge uh, some person, first of all, uh, Professor Volterrani, the chief of the department uh, that supported uh, all the work, uh, all the co-authors of the paper, and I want to thank in particular with, uh, to Giorgio Rizzato, mentor and friends, uh, previous uh, chief of the department uh, in Gorizia, all the team of GE Ultrasound that supported uh, uh, all the part of the study with uh, Luca Gaburro, Laura Taroni, Chris Lacont, uh, Michael uh, Westburn, Linda Bordini, Robina Parvets, and previously Alessandro Preziosa, and uh, all the supporting uh, personnel of the Department of Diagnostic Imaging of Siena. Thank you very much for your attention.